You may well be wondering why am I wandering around in the dark in DayZ in a video about whether I'm going to be upgrading to the PS5, the Xbox Series X or a gaming PC when the new hardware starts to arrive in a few months time. Well the reason is that I'm really looking forward to playing games like DayZ on the next generation of consoles or perhaps a gaming PC um, because I think with with the with, with the with the PS4 and the Xbox One, we've had this really interesting transition, where lots of developers who probably would only have ever put their games onto PC have also put them onto console and had in some cases real real good success that will spur them on to do the same for the next range of consoles. So um, PUBG is probably the uh, the biggest example, you know. Um, PUBG ca originally came to Xbox uh, late 2017, I'm going to I'm going to say with their kind of uh, early access um, system they did. Uh, immensely popular. I myself bought an Xbox One uh, S purely to play PUBG because I'd borrowed my son's ex OG Xbox One and he wanted it back. <laughs> so to buy myself an Xbox One S. Um, I already had a PlayStation 1. Eventually it was released on PlayStation 4, so I kind of started playing it on there. Uh, DayZ came out in early access on Xbox One as well. Obviously it's been out on PC for an awful long time, since sort of 2013, and that has been incredibly su successful as well. You only have to go to the community server lists in uh, DayZ on Xbox or PlayStation to see hundreds and hundreds of player bought and player maintained servers that people are play, playing on let alone the community servers that people people go on so i think developers will see consoles as as a real opportunity especially as consoles are now based around and i'm probably going to get this wrong but it's it is it the 486 architecture in the days of the xbox 360 and the ps3 they were different they weren't based on like normal computers were they they were quite different um, and so it's also easier, I'd imagine, for people to port them over. So fingers crossed, you know, I'm also looking forward to perhaps things like um, Armour, the military sim, coming over to console. Uh, Hell Let Loose, I've done a few videos about that recently. An amazing kind of battlefield uh, simulator. You know, World War II that, that is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Um, and all these games that have a following on PC but I think would also have a, a following on console. So the question is though, you know, what, you know, what am I going to do? What am I thinking about? And the answer is I haven't made a firm decision yet. Because the problem is not only are we going to be updating consoles um, in the run up to Christmas or maybe afterwards, but you've also got to think about upgrading your TV as well. Um, you know, these consoles are probably going to be running, well, they're going to be running in 4K, aren't they? So you've got to have a 4K TV. I don't have a 4K TV. If I was get, buying a gaming PC, then, you know, I'd have to look at, you know, getting a 4K gaming monitor, you know, and all, and all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm probably not going to go with a gaming PC. I'm fairly sure about that now, because there was a very interesting video by a chap called... Um, we're going to get his name wrong now. Jay Z Two Cents. I'll put the link to the video in the YouTube description down below. Really clever chap, um, amazing YouTube channel. He's got like over two million subscribers. Where well, he sits down and he breaks down um, the power of uh, Xbox Series X and tries to figure out if you could make a uh, gaming PC for a similar price, what the performance would be. Um, and how much it would cost to make a gaming PC of the same performance. And his kind of conclusions from that video were that in order to make a gaming PC that had similar performance to what the Xbox Series X will have and presumably the PS5, you're going to have to spend, you know, thousand, a thousand dollars basically, um, well over a thousand dollars, probably, you know, well over a thousand pounds, and you've got the price of the monitor on top of that. Um, and if we take, say, the, say the price of the uh, Xbox Series X uh, or the PS5, let's say it's £450. So it's going to be something, I think it's going to be something like that. 
for that price you can't make a gaming PC that would be anywhere near the performance of those machines and the reason for this he goes into it is because what they think they're doing is these new machines are getting the new AMD uh, graphics processors in them um, and this will really be the first time that they're, they're kind of mass produced and uh, and um, what we're going to see after that in the, in the months after that as these graphics processors are, are put into ordinary, well, ordinary he says graphics cards for, for, for PCs then the PC performance for that price bracket will then start to start to catch up but definitely um, he's very excited because this is going to be another re really big jump forward for consoles where consoles kind of jump over the performance of of lots of uh, middle to uh, middle high PCs and really take the lead in terms of uh, technology so so that's good so I'm probably going to get one of the consoles then the question is you know which one you know do we go with the Series S, uh, X or do we go with the PlayStation 5? Um, going off the specs that we've got, and as I'm recording this video, it's July uh, 2020, it appears that the Series X may be slightly more powerful than the PlayStation 5, but it's too early to say. Um, we won't know until we've got the real specs and you know the consoles have been tested and the acid test will be it will be 4k at 60 frames a second won't it? That, that's the thing and it'll be interesting to see if there is a difference between the consoles at that kind of uh, that hurdle of performance because when we had the PlayStation 4 versus the Xbox one uh, right from the start it was apparent the PlayStation 4 was actually more powerful than the Xbox One because uh, with games like Call of Duty the PlayStation 4 could uh, could crack along uh, 1080p 60 frames a second where the Xbox One couldn't it would go down to like 920 or something like that it would go to a lower resolution so there was a clear difference in performance and I remember playing uh, when I was deciding many years ago, I remember it's like seven years ago, wasn't it, when the PlayStation came out and the Xbox One came out, I think. Um, I remember a couple of years after that, because my son had a PlayStation and an Xbox, and I was playing Black Ops 3, Call of Duty, on both, just right, trying to figure out which is the one I wanted, which one felt the best. And in the end, you know, I decided to go with the PlayStation 4, because that extra performance, that extra frames and, and the sharpness of the image really pushed it. So... If there's a difference where actually, say, the PlayStation won't do 4K at 60 frames a second, but the Xbox One will, then there's the, sorry, the Xbox Series X will, then there's a strong argument for changing, you know, over to 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 Xbox or kind of going back to Xbox because you know I had the Xbox 360. Um, but if there isn't really a difference and both systems will push 4K at 60 frames a second, then I'll probably be sticking with PlayStation because you know PlayStation is where most of my digital library is um, um, you know most of most of my uh, backwards compat compatibility will be however there is another aspect that is incredibly important and that is the content creation abilities of both consoles between the Xbox one and the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 is head and shoulders above the Xbox when it comes to content creation. Using the free app on the PlayStation 4 you can create videos uh, based on gameplay that you can add narration to and sound to that can last up to an hour which is really good and it's really easy to use. Also from the PlayStation you can, you can stream directly to Twitch and you can stream direct to YouTube as well. Um, the only thing you couldn't stream to was Mixer. So it's very, very powerful in terms of content creation, creating animated GIFs, um, videos, as I say, you know, uh, editing screenshots, all that sort of stuff. You can do it all on the PlayStation 4 and Share Factory, and it's brilliant. Um, it's made a massive difference to myself and my YouTube channel. The ability to create videos very, very easily and very, very quickly, and at the touch of a button, just say. Um, ha please can you have recorded the last hour of gameplay I remember when PUBG came out on the PlayStation 4 I was so pleased because it meant that I could play a game of PUBG and if I won or had a good game I could just hit a button and the PlayStation will have automatically recorded the last hour of gameplay which I could then edit edit into a video for YouTube or I could just upload it as, as footage that way with the Xbox you could only ever record 10 minutes 
and it was very clunky the the program that you could use to put clips together was absolutely awful i mean terrible and so you would have to take clips off the off the uh, xbox i guess the only real good, the good thing was it had one drive so you could you could copy stuff to one drive and then it would appear in your laptop a few minutes later which was quite good but then i'd have to use something like adobe premiere to make a video and then audacity to record the audio and it was all it was all a pain it really was a r real pain also the xbox would only ever stream to mixer and twitch um, I think originally when, when it first came out you could stream to YouTube but then YouTube changed their app and it, and it stopped doing it. Um, so that was always a problem. Um, and then we've now got the situation where the Xbox streaming solution Mixer is going away and instead Microsoft have got into bed with Facebook Gaming. So does that mean the Xbox Series X is going to have Facebook integration tightly interwoven with its operating system and that's going to be the way that you share stuff because the, the thing is Microsoft and Facebook you know they're direct competitors to the likes of Google and uh, and and um, and uh, Twitter maybe not probably not Twitch um, whereas Sony, they're kind of separate, aren't they? You know, um, and I always th and, and I always think that it, Sony were more magnanimous with the ability to be able to stream to YouTube and stream to Twitch, and and that worked very well. So, if we're in a situation where the Xbox One, uh, sorry, the Xbox Series X is the more powerful console, however, its multimedia, its sharing options, aren't as powerful. Then we could I could be well in a situation where that makes me switch you know but you know stay with the PlayStation. Also, but then we have the situation maybe say say PlayStation abandoned Share Factory. There's no new version of Share Factory they're putting on the PlayStation Five. Um, then the the Xbox actually does have a good editing solution this time. That may push me towards the Microsoft console. So as you can see it's still early days there's still a lot to think about um, until we get some real specs, some real tests, some real we can watch some real gameplay um, you know we won't really know but I'm pretty sure I won't be going with the gaming PC because I think for the money that we're gonna have to spend to buy these consoles and they're, they're not gonna be cheap you won't be able to build a gaming PC you know that will be anywhere near the performance um, and also the other thing, the, the kind of wild card in all this has been the coronavirus. Who knows whether you'll actually be able to get one of these things before Christmas. Um, and the, the scarcity could well drive up the prices anyway. Uh, you know, and I'm not going to be, like, you know, pay through the nose to be an early adopter. You know, I'm not, not silly like that. I'll, I'll wait until after Christmas. I'll wait till, you know, March next year, should it be that case. Because if you think about all the big game releases that are going to be coming in sort of November, like Call of Duty... In fact, the only real big one is going to, that I'm really interested in is, is Call of Duty, and then like PUBG and DayZ on the new consoles. You know, I can I can wait for that. You know, because Call of Duty will be coming out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. <laughs> you know, because if you think back to the days when um, the uh, PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One were released, you had uh, games that that were published on both. So you had um, uh, Ghosts. Uh, came out on Xbox 360 and Xbox One and PS3 and PS4. Uh, you then had Advanced Warfare, which came out on uh, Xbox 360, Ad uh, Xbox One, PS3 and PS4. And right up to Black Ops 3. Um, they definitely released Black Ops 3 on Xbox 360 and um, Xbox... Uh, Xbox One, although the Xbox 360 version was just like it was multiplayer only, <laughs> and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't it wasn't that great. Um, I don't know whether they did the same with PS. I think yeah, I think they did do the same with PS3. So you you had three generations of Call of Duty, so three years of overlap between you know the old consoles and the new ones. And we're going to see something similar to that because there are, um, I think there's something like 60 million PlayStation 4s out there and 30 million Xbox Ones of various different types so it's not like we're going to see these place that these uh, consoles going away anytime soon and also there are lots of rumors that um, play Sony's going to carry on making the PlayStation 4 um, for a long time 
Um, and it's just going to get cheaper and cheaper. So you'll be able to pick up a PlayStation 4 for 100 bucks. You'll be able to pick up an Xbox One, uh, eh, Xbox One S for like 100 bucks. So you'll have that um, cheaper gaming option, um, especially. And remember, this this is going to be the interesting one for the streaming services that are coming out, because if they can get streaming working very, very, very well, the actual power of the console won't really make that much difference unless you're playing competitive multiplayer shooters. You know, when you're playing, you know, a single player game or even something like DayZ, if you can stream it over 4K to an Xbox uh, One S, say, or, or a PlayStation 4, or even at 1080p and just stream it digitally, so the, the console isn't doing any of the hard work, it's only, it's only the, the remote uh, server somewhere, then that could be a very interesting option indeed, because I've come to know and love GeForce Now as a streaming service for PC games. And in fact, I'm probably in October going to take out a subscription on Shadow Play, where you, where you hire a gaming PC. So there we go. It's all still up, still up for grabs. Whether we're going to be going for PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, um, it's going to be one of those two. It probably won't be a gaming PC. But what, what are you going to do? Put your comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video, hit like. If you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. And at this point, when I was wandering around Daisy, I just realised I'd gone the wrong direction for 15 minutes, and <laughs> I've got to turn around and carry on running back where I came from. Anyway, that's enough, and I'll see you again soon.